Hello and welcome to Worship Today. It's Sunday, May the 10th of 2020. It's Mother's Day, so a special greeting goes to all the moms and all those who have been like mothers to us throughout our lives. A reminder that the words for the hymns for today's service are found in the printed sermon document found immediately below the link to the worship video on the website. Also, a wee disclaimer today, there's a birthday in the neighborhood, so you may hear some car horns honking throughout the course of the service. People are getting right into the spirit of wishing another a happy birthday. The call to worship today is adapted from Psalm 31. Since God is our rock and our fortress, for the sake of the Lord's name, may the Spirit lead and guide us. May God's face shine on us, and save us in unfailing love. Let us worship God, our strength and our refuge. The opening hymn is O oh Jesus I Have Promised, and we're singing all the verses today. Let us pray. Steadfast and loving God, you are our refuge in times of trouble and our shelter when the storms of life frighten us. We trust you, you alone. We see the path ahead in you and give thanks for your truth. In you we find abundant life, and so we offer you our worship and love as the God who creates and gives life to the world as the Son who preached the truth of the good news, and the Holy Spirit who guides us this day and always. Steadfast and loving God, we confess that while we know Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, we have often failed to follow him. We sometimes doubt his teaching, wondering if it is still relevant for our lives today. Rather than live the life he offers, we make our own paths, 
and pursue our own selfish desires. Forgive us for the many ways we have fallen short of your purpose for our lives. Give us courage to follow Jesus, who continues to show us the way, the truth, and the life, as it is found in him. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Friends, do not let your hearts be troubled. Know that in Christ you are forgiven. Accept God's grace and forgiveness this day, and extend it to others. For Jesus' sake. Amen. As we approach the word of God today, let us do so with prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we listen to the words of Scripture, open our hearts and minds with the wisdom of your Spirit. By that same Spirit's power, move in us so that we follow your way more closely, live in your truth more fully, and share in your gift of life more abundantly. Through Christ, your living word. Amen. The first scripture reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Let us hear the word of God. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, the stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Also, a reading from John chapter 14, familiar words in the first 14 verses of that chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing the work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. 
and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Over the past week, I've been thinking about the many roles that I play. I am a mom, a wife, a daughter, a daughter-in-law, a niece, a sister-in-law, a cousin, a minister, a friend, a colleague, a music student, and a puppy parent. That's a lot of hats to wear. Each of us has a variety of roles in our lives. This means we also have a variety of relationships and the role we play in each one makes an impact on those with whom we share these relationships. As a mom, I leave a mark on my kids. As a spouse, I have a deep connection to my husband. As a daughter, I have an impact on my dad and so on. I really appreciate these relationships and I hope those with whom I share them can say the same. Relationships are not always perfect, which goes without saying, but they make our lives what they are. They give us the resources we need to feel loved, to find help, to laugh and cry, and even express frustration at having to be isolated from each other. Thank goodness for phone calls and video technology. Today, our society is recognizing Mother's Day. When we give thanks for our moms, whether they are still living or they've gone before us into God's eternal light. We give thanks for those who have been and are like mothers to us. We are grateful for those women in our lives that have made a difference for us along the journey. It's hard to believe my own mom's been gone for over two years. I miss her and I am forever grateful for the impact her life made on mine. It certainly was an imperfect relationship. There is no arguing that point, but it was one that helped to shape and define who I am now and how I fulfill the roles God has given me. At the heart of that relationship is the fact that mom made sure that I was raised within the family of the church. Little did she know how that was going to turn out and I'm very thankful that she could be a part of my life as a minister of word and sacrament. I have no idea what roles my boys will play throughout life's journey. I just hope that their having been raised within the family of the church will help to anchor and sustain them throughout their adult lives. For the family of the church is anchored in Christ and sustained by his spirit. And we are given a good foundation when we are a part of the body of Christ. We have shared two scripture readings today that speak to our being a part of the family of the church. Each reading addresses what this means for us from a different perspective, and they are connected by the common ground of faith in Jesus. First Peter talks about what we are now. John talks about what we know now, and what is still to come. They are readings that remind us about the fullness of life as disciples of Jesus who believe in and connect with God, the Father, through the risen Son. First Peter speaks of what and who we are. We are those precious to God as his special children. We are the people who hold Jesus in our hearts as a precious gemstone, irreplaceable, unparalleled in value. He is also the cornerstone of our lives, and we are grateful for that solid foundation that is built on him. We are the church, a people who yearn to draw closer to God through Christ, to know Jesus better and to love him more deeply. We, the body of Christ, are being built into a spiritual house, a holy dwelling place for the Spirit of God. We are the church as a whole, and we are individually members of it. 
We are each a part of something far greater than ourselves, and yet each of us is a valuable and necessary part of that greater whole. We are those who continue the ministry of those who encountered the risen Christ and were blessed by him with his spirit. We, as this New Testament reading quotes the prophets, are those who trust God, and therefore we will not be put to shame. We may be dismissed or ignored or even ridiculed by those who do not believe, but we will not be shamed. This is the promise of God, that we are his chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We have a responsibility to model and teach his way in word and in work. And in doing so, we are blessed by the Holy Spirit that continues to fill us and sustain us with what we need to worship and serve. We are blessed with a craving for a deeper knowledge of God through Christ, for more godly wisdom, for more nurturing of the Spirit as we grow and mature in our discipleship. It is one thing to say we believe in Jesus. It is even more to grow up in Jesus within his truth and his way. In the beloved passage from John's Gospel today, we are reminded of the promise of a home with God in his eternal kingdom. We are assured of the security of our relationship with God through Christ. That security is not only for the future, but for the home that we have in Christ now. An eternal home is being prepared for us for the moment we live within Christ, in his body, and his spirit lives in us. If we know Christ, we know God, for they are one. If we know Christ, we know God, and we know the spirit, for they are one. If we know and love and trust the holy three in one, we live within the fold of faith, within a spiritual home that cannot be built with human hands, but is only built by the Holy Spirit in whom we place our confidence. Because we are God's chosen, precious children, we are more than what we see and know now. We are the family of God. As I was looking through some resources for this week's message, I read a humorous story about being a mother that I think speaks to this state in which we live, a state of being more than what we see, more than we can understand, and more precious than we know. The author is unknown, and I found the story on a website that provides resources for preaching and worship. And it's written from a first-person perspective, so let me share that story with you. A few months ago, when I was picking up the children at school, another mother I knew well rushed up to me. Emily was fuming with indignation. Do you know what you and I are, she demanded. Before I could answer, and I didn't really have one handy, she blurted out the reason for her question. It seemed she had just returned from renewing her driver's license at the county clerk's office. Asked by the woman recorder to state her occupation, Emily had hesitated, uncertain how to classify herself. What I mean is, explained the recorder, do you have a job or are you just a... Of course I have a job, snapped Emily. I'm a mother. We don't list mother as an occupation. Housewife covers it, said the recorder emphatically. I forgot all about her story until one day I found myself in the same situation this time at our own, town hall, our own town hall. The clerk was obviously a career woman, poised, efficient, and possessed a high-sounding title like official interrogator or town registrar. And what is your occupation, she probed. What made me say it, I do not know. The words simply popped out. I'm a research associate in the field of child development and human relations. The clerk paused, ballpoint pen frozen in midair, and looked up as though she had not heard right. I repeated the title slowly, emphasizing the most significant words. 
Then I stared with wonder as my pompous pronouncement was written in bold black ink on the official questionnaire. Might I ask, said the clerk with new interest, just what you do in your field. Coolly, without any trace of fluster in my voice, I heard myself reply. I have a continuing program of research, what mother doesn't, in the laboratory and in the field. Normally I would have said indoors and out. I'm working for my masters, the whole family, and already have four credits, all daughters. Of course, the job is one of the most demanding in the humanities. Any mother care to disagree? And I often work 14 hours a day. 24 is more like it. But the job is more challenging than most run-of-the-mill careers, and the rewards are in satisfaction rather than just money. There was an increasing note of respect in the clerk's voice as she completed the form, stood up, and personally ushered me out the door. As I drove into our driveway, buoyed up by my glamorous new career, I was greeted by my lab assistants, age 13, 7, and 3. And upstairs, I could hear our new experimental model, six months, in the child development program, testing out a new vocal pattern. I felt triumphant. I had scored a beat on bureaucracy. And I had gone down on the official records as someone more distinguished and indispensable to humankind than just another. Friends, we are more valuable than we know. Each of us is blessed with a title that defies description. Although we can tell others what it feels like to be a child of God. We are not just another parent, child, employee, or church member. Each of us is someone that cannot be replaced, someone that makes a difference to someone else. Corporately, we are not just another congregation. We are a branch of the family of God, ministers in the name of Christ, disciples of Jesus in everything we say and do. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. We are the people of God, and that is a remarkably special identity. We are promised life in the future. We are blessed with life now as creatures precious that belong to the Creator who loves and cherishes us. We are not just another anything. We are God's children. And that identity is just what we need to fulfill all of the roles we play in the relationships we cherish within the family of God. Amen. A minister in the state of Rhode Island, each year on Mother's Day uses a prayer by Walter Rauschenbusch, known for his ministry during the social gospel awakening of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Rauschenbusch is particularly remembered for his prayers. Interestingly, he lost his hearing at an early age and it imposed a state of isolation in his life. He spent much time observing the people around him and was deeply touched by the human experiences he witnessed. This morning, as our society recognizes Mother's Day, our pastoral prayer is one written by that minister in Rhode Island, beginning with Walter Rauschenbusch's prayer for the family. And so, let us pray. O God, we who are bound together in the tender ties of love, pray thee for a day of unclouded love. May no passing irritation rob us of our joy in one another. Forgive us if we have often been swift to see the human failings and slow to see the preciousness of those who are still the dearest comfort of our lives. May there be no sharp words that wound and scar, no rift that may grow into estrangement. Suffer us not to grieve those whom thou hast sent to us as the sweet ministers of love, May our eyes not be so holden by selfishness 
that we know thine angels only when they spread their wings to return to thee. On this Mother's Day, we pray for those who have lost their mothers and for those mothers who have lost children or lost pregnancies. We pray for those who are struggling with infertility. We pray for mothers who feel overwhelmed and inadequate. And we pray for those whose mothers were never able to give them the love and support they needed. May they be surrounded by your loving presence. We give thanks for our mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers and for all the women who have nurtured us and cared for us on life's journey. For sisters and aunts, for Sunday school teachers and children's program leaders. We pray for single moms and stepmoms and foster moms. We give thanks for adoptive parents and for those who have had to give their children for adoption. We give thanks for all the ways in which you have loved us as a mother loves her children. We lift up our prayers for the people of this church and for the friends and loved ones closest to us. Heal, protect, and strengthen them according to their need. Comfort those who mourn with the assurance of your presence. We ask these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together with sisters and brothers all across the whole human family, saying, as he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is the hymn, We Are God's People. And again, we'll be singing all of the verses.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you this day and always. Amen.